Hi there. Okay, so this is section two of the metabolic pathways, key area six of unit one of higher human biology. And we're going to be looking at enzymes. Now, things that you should already know about enzymes are quite important here because the SQA will assume you already know them from National 5. So let's have a look at these then. So you need to know they're already, you should already know they're biological catalysts. So they speed up reactions. They are made of protein and have a specific shaped active site. Enzymes can build molecules up or break them down, and they act on a substrate and make a product. And on top of that, you should know um, the enzyme reaction. So the idea of the substrate is on the tail end of the arrow. The product would be on the pointy end of the arrow, and enzymes should live above the arrow. Okay. Now, enzymes regulate metabolic pathways. We already covered that in the first section. The idea is the presence or absence of them will control the speed of a metabolic pathway. They act on one particular substrate that complements the active site of the enzyme. People have a tendency to say that the active site is the same shape as a substrate. Now, that's not true because if the active site in the enzyme that you can see there was exactly the same shape as a substrate, it would be a sticky out pentagon. Instead, it's a complementary shape. It matches the, the edge of the shape of the substrate. OK, so the active site is the area where the substrate is going to bind. Now, something you need to be aware of is this idea of activation energy. OK, so this is a new concept for higher human. Burning is a chemical reaction. If I wanted to set fire to something right now, I would need some energy to get it started. I would need quite a lot of heat energy to set fire to, I don't know, the table behind me. OK, once it's on fire, though, I wouldn't need to keep inputting energy in order for that to burn. Now, that inputting energy is known as the activation energy to start off a reaction. OK, some things need hardly any energy. So, for example, hydrogen can spontaneously combust if you leave it in an open space with oxygen accessing it, then sometimes it can just with minimal, minimal input of energy, it can just suddenly start to burn. Other things need quite a lot more energy to get started. So, for example, a wooden log needs fire lighters and about five minutes of exposure to a flame before it actually kicks off. Now, the energy needed to start any reaction is called the activation energy. So that bottom sentence is very important. Now, enzymes have a role in activation energy. We've said before, they speed up chemical reactions. This means they make them more likely to actually occur in the first place. And the way they do that is on the next slide. They lower this activation energy. They lower the amount of energy for the reaction to take place. So on the diagram on the left, what we can see is the yellow bar at labeled activation energy is quite high. The substrates need quite a lot of energy to jump over that yellow bar and turn into products. OK. Whereas the diagram on the right is the enzyme has lowered the activation energy, meaning that the substrates need less energy to jump over and end up being products. So this this diagram is not a real life thing. It's just representing the, the conversion of substrates into products and the fact that enzymes lower the activation energy. And because they make it easier for the reaction to happen, the reaction speeds up. It happens more often. And so the rate of the reaction appears to go up. Now, the second idea that you need to know about enzymes is the idea of affinity. Now, affinity is it, it means liking in, in sort of the English language. Um, enzymes and substrates have high affinity for each other. This means they are kind of attracted towards each other, similar to magnetism, but not magnetism or love. They're, they're not again, they're, they're chemical substances. They don't have brains. Uh, they can't die. They can't love. And they're not metal, uh, so they can't be magnetically attracted. We're talking about intermolecular forces that means that they are drawn together. So substrate and enzyme have high affinity for each other. Products have low affinity for the active site. This causes them to leave the active site after the reaction is done, and that frees up the active site for more reactions. OK, so substrates have high affinity, making it more likely that they will bounce in and react. Products have low affinity, which clears the products out of the way of the active site, allowing the enzyme to do more reactions. OK, another important idea is this idea of induced fit. Now, all the previous diagrams, I've had the active site drawn as a perfect fit for the substrate. In reality, that's not quite true. OK, so if we have a look at the diagram. The idea is that the enzyme is not quite it's a good fit for the substrate, but not quite perfect. When the substrate moves into the enzyme, the enzyme's active site 
adjusts very slightly to completely fit the substrate. That then causes a reaction to happen. Now that changing shape, that adjusting, is called induced fit. Okay, so when the enzyme substrate complex is formed, the idea is the enzyme will do the induced fit and that will fit better the substrate and then the reaction will happen and then you'll have low affinity products. The enzymes at the site will clear and then a new substrate is available to bounce back inside. But this idea is a slightly different one than we have covered before. We used to say the active site is perfectly complementary to the substrate. It's complementary once induced fit has happened. It's still quite complementary. Like look, it's just got on the diagram that the edges are a bit raggedy. But as soon as the substrate moves into the active site of the enzyme, it adjusts and it does perfectly fit it. OK, and that's called induced fit. OK, so a summary of our new enzyme terms. So activation energy is the energy required to start an to start a reaction and it's lowered by an enzyme. High affinity is the forces of attraction between the enzyme active site and the substrate. Low affinity is the force of attraction between the enzyme's active site and the product or products. And induced fit is the enzyme changing the shape of the active site to better fit the substrate and carry out the reaction. OK, so all of these good higher terms. The next video is all about factors that affect the activity of enzymes. And you should already know from National 5 about pH and temperature.